In this video, we're going to talk about overriding some of the default policies that come with the Palo Alto. So when I talk about the default policies, if we look at our policy section, we can see that there are two policies here under security, one called an intrazone default and the other called an interzone default. Uh, if we look under NAT, there's no default policy, so it's only under the security. So these two rules, basically the first one is intrazone. If I have more than one interface on a single zone, such as multiple desktops, this says should traffic be allowed between the, the different interfaces on the same zone. If we scroll on over to the right here, we can see that the default action is allowed. So by default, the Palo Alto allows traffic within the same zone to communicate across multiple interfaces. The other default, however, is an interzone default, which is specifies whether traffic should be able to cross from one zone to another. For instance, should the server zone be able to contact the internet, or should servers be able to contact DMZ? And when we scroll on over to the right, we will see that the default action is deny. Now there's other settings in here that by default we can't edit. If I click on this, I can't edit this options. They're all grayed out. However, I can override some of those options. Down here at the bottom, there's an override button. And so with the interzone default, I can go ahead and click override. And I can see I can't edit everything, but I can add some, make some changes. Uh, for instance, by default, the inter, intrazone uh, log settings are not logged at all. So maybe I want to start logging that traffic. So I can go ahead and just say, go ahead and log session at end, or even change that to log session at beginning. Uh, and then anything that hits this rule, which by default will be denied, will at least leave a log event. If I need to research my, my logs to see what's happening and see if anybody's trying to attack my company, this would be one possible way to be able to see what's going on. Additionally, if I'm troubleshooting why certain security policies aren't working, and I think it might be working all the way down, uh, the list of policies to this one rule by enabling logging at this point, I can then monitor and see what's going on. Uh, while this is helpful for troubleshooting, it's not always something you really want to keep up and running. Uh, additional options such as actions. Uh, you could change the default from allow or from deny to allow or reset or one of these other options. If I set this to allow, then what that essentially does is it allows me to take my network, uh, allows me to take my network and not require any policies whatsoever to allow traffic to flow between the various networks. Now this obviously is not a good idea from a security standpoint because then any traffic would be allowed by default and therefore my firewall would essentially be open to the world. So you don't normally want to change the default action, especially on the inter-zone default policy. But you could go ahead and change that, and I'll do it here because I know I'm, I've saved my configuration, I'm gonna go ahead and revert it as soon as I'm done. Uh, but once that's done, go ahead and click Commit. That saves the configuration, and then it will, again, work its way through all of the policies here. There we go. It will work its way through the policies here. It will try that rule. It will try that rule, try that rule, and then finally hit that rule. And again, if it's interzone traffic, then we just change the, the setting to allow and it would permit all the traffic.